How do you think Beijing will respond to all of this? And with your former trade minister's hat on, could AUKUS in any way jeopardise uh, trade flows and investment between uh, uh, China and Australia at a time, at a critical time, when uh, China's emerging from the pandemic? You know, I've always firmly believed that it's possible for uh, two nations like Australia and China uh, to coexist in peace um, and to recognise that although there are areas of difference and, uh, and clear differences in terms of some of the world views, there are many areas where, frankly, it's in Australia and China's interest to be able to find common ground, uh, to work together, uh, to drive investment, to drive trade, knowing that it's good for both countries. In many respects, the bilateral relationship between Australia and China um, mirrors that of the bilateral between the US and China or the UK and China um, and a number of other countries. And it's no surprise that you see, for example, this trilateral agreement between the UK, the US and Australia. Um, fundamentally, there does not need to be an economic consequence from a decision like this. Um, I think it's fair to say that Australia, the US, the UK and other countries uh, can maintain a strong sovereign principle around domestic security and domestic sovereignty, uh, the defence of the nation. I think at the very least, Australians certainly expect their governments to do that, whatever political flavour their governments may have, uh, and to maintain that strong posture, but not at economic expense. Steve, in terms of regional security, do you accept, though, that uh, within the next one or two decades, if there are uh, nuclear-powered submarines prowling the Indo-Pacific and uh, Xi Jinping has vowed to make Ch the Chinese military uh, a great wall of steel, there is a non-negligible risk of uh, a military miscalculation in our region, and a big one at that? Uh, well, any time you see, uh, you know, significant steps forward in terms of defence posture by countries throughout the region, uh, it does create a more febrile environment. That goes without saying. Um, I think, though, it's important to recognise which comes first. Uh, and why that? what I mean is that often these decisions are taken in response to circumstances rather than preempting circumstances. Uh, the fundamental question that all countries across the Indo-Pacific are going to have to answer is how we're going to promote, uh, to use the words of the announcement, uh, an open and free Indo-Pacific region. Um, blocks like ASEAN, as well as a number of other countries throughout the region, are going to have to consider the way in which we, we navigate a pathway forward that promotes trade, promotes investment, promotes economic growth, but does so while also being mindful of the need to maintain, as I said, uh, a sovereign defence capability. I think many countries are grappling with this issue right now, uh, and it's going to represent a very significant change from what has been the prevailing orthodoxy for quite some time. 